<laughs> Convince your other teachers. All right, so problem number two. We have this. And they want to know the vertex, see if we can answer this. And the y-intercept, see if we can answer this. And the x-intercept, see if we can answer this, as well as the graph. Okay? Okay. Um, as it's set up right now, do you think you have enough knowledge to tell me the vertex? It's in standard form, but it's missing something. What is it missing? The B value. In order to find the, the vertex, you would go negative B over A, which would be 0, or negative B over 2A, which would be 0 over 2, which is 0. So what does my vertex have to be on this problem? 0 what? 0, 5. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and plot that. I know that's going to be my vertex. So 0, 0, 5. Okay, um, where is this going to be crossing the y-axis at 0, 5 as well? It just happens to be that my y-intercept and my vertex happen to be the same point. Does this parabola open up or down? Up. Up. If it opens up, will it cross the x-axis? No. No. So the x-intercept does not exist. Is that all right? There are imaginary solution. If I wanted to graph this parabola from the vertex, I'm going to go right one and up how many? One. And I'm going to go left one and how many? Okay. Perfect. So that's exactly what problem number two is going to look like. Okay. Can I do four? Sweet. Problem number four. Here we go. Would you just open the candy already? It's like in the movie theater going, I'm going to you know, cut your spleen out of your nose. What? You guys know, you go to a movie, someone's doing that little critical thing. It's like, no, just... Yeah, well, it's a further junction, so it's, it's more painful. I mean, spleen is right here, so you go up through the nose. Scope it. All right. Problem number four. Go, Bubbles. Problem number four. Problem number four. Shh. If I wanted to figure out where the vertex would be, where the y-intercept would be, and where the x-intercepts would be, let's try and figure this out. This is set up in what type of form right now? Make sure your phone's are gone. Slope. Not slope intercept. It's called vertex form. It's called vertex form. So if this is already set up in vertex form, shh, vertex form is this. Where the vertex would be h comma k, and the growth factor is a. Okay, so what is my vertex of this problem? Four, negative three. So it's opposite inside, same outside. Okay, so let's put, let's get this vertex drawn. So I have four, negative three. Is that okay? Do I have enough information right now to do the y-intercept? No, why not? What form does it need to be in for vertex? Standard form. This is vertex form. It's not standard form. So if I wanted to find out where it crossed the y at or y intercept, I would have to go x minus four times x minus four to find my term or whatever my constant would be is where it crossed the y axis. This one will cross the y axis, but I don't know right now where it will. So I'm going to hold off on that, and I'm going to hold off on the x intercept for right now. Let's see if we can answer this question by pattern graphing, okay? So I'm gonna go right and left of the vertex right now and up how many? One. So I'm gonna go right one, up one, left one, up one. 
That works for me. Am I going to get to the x-axis on that yet? No. Okay. If I wanted to keep going, basically the pattern is if you cut, if you count from the vertex each time, it's going to go one, four, then nine, etc. Okay. I know there's another way to look at it because you count it by the primes, but that I always like saying if you always start from the vertex, it's pretty simple. So I went right one, left one, up one. Now I'm going to go right two, up four, and left two, up four. So far I have this as my problem. Do I know where this is going to take place now? Not yet. Do I know where this and this are going to take place? I know approximately where, but I know, do not know exactly where. So what things would I have to do to this problem in order to figure out a little bit more? What would I have to do in order to get to the y-intercept as well as the x-intercepts? What? Plug in zero? Okay, let's do it. All right, so I'm going to go back a screen. I'm going to go back a screen, and I'm going to erase... This right here. And let's go to work. Oops, that's not it. There we go. Um, you know what? I didn't want to do that, but I'll rewrite it. I don't know why I erased that. All right, so let's rewrite the problem. So I have this is equal to x minus 4 squared minus 3. I know that my vertex is at 4, negative 3. So let's solve this from here. So someone said plug in 0. Where should I plug in 0? For f at x. So 0 is equal to x minus 4 quantity squared minus 3. Add 3. Take the square root of both sides. What should I not forget? Plus or minus. Plus or minus. Okay, so I get x minus 4 is equal to plus or minus square root 3. Okay, I'm not quite sure where square root 3 is, but it's above 1 and below 2. I'm going to add 4 to both sides, and I'm going to flip it over. So I have add 4 plus or minus root 3. So this, this point right here is 4 plus root 3, comma 0. And this point right here is 4 minus root 3 comma 0. Those are those exact points. Where is it going to cross the um, where is it going to cross the y-axis? Well I said that you had to FOIL this out. So I have x minus 4 times x minus 4 minus 3. So x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 16 minus 3. So x squared minus 8x plus 13. So this point right here is the point 0, 13. Okay? So there's a lot happening with these sometimes, right? Let's keep going. Let's go to number 4. Or number 6, excuse me. Number 6, I have the function at x is equal to negative x squared plus 4. What's something you notice about this problem right off the bat? Missing a b. Missing a b. Good. What else? What's negative? The x squared. So what's that going to mean with our Opens graph? Down. Opens down, right? Okay. So, um, we want to know the vertex. We want to know the x-intercept and the y-intercept. Do we have enough information up here to list the vertex? Yeah. Missing the B term, so if I do my plug in, I get 0 over something, which is going to be 0. So I have uh, 0, 4. That's enough information for our vertex. So 0, 4. Do I have enough information to say where this cross the y-intercept? I don't know. Is it 
Friday, and I'm just kind of tired. <laughs> Take a nap. Where's the uh, Where's the y-intercept on this one? It happens to be at zero four as well. Do I know enough information where it crosses the x-axis? I don't know. I think I could pattern graph off of this. So I'm going to go right one, left one, and down how many? And why am I going down? That negative right here means something. So I'm going to go right one, down one, left one, down one. Okay? And then the next one, I'm going to go right two from the vertex and left two from the vertex and down how many? Four. So I'm going to go right two from the vertex and down four. And left two from the vertex and down four. Where is it going to be crossing that? So I counted over one, I counted over two. I counted over one, I counted over two. So where is it crossing the x-intercepts? Yeah, so at 2 comma 0 and at negative 2 comma 0. So that problem worked out nicely. You okay so far? Am I explaining okay? I explain all right, mom. Number 8. Number 8. Uh, we have the function at x is equal to negative x minus 1 quantity squared minus 3. I want my vertex. I want my y-intercept. I want my x-intercept. What kind of form is this set up in? Vertex form. Do I know my vertex? One negative three. What do I know about this parabola? Opens down. How do you know? The negative out in front of the quantity means it's going to open down. Do I know right now where it's going to cross the y-axis? No. Do I know where it's going to cross the x-axis right now? It's oh, so you keep that out there. It's a good call. That sit, keep that grouping out there, and inside the grouping, it's always going to be opposite. So whatever's happening outside of the grouping will not influence this as far as the vertex go. Okay, this right here is just going to be the growth growth factor opening downward. All right, so one negative three. A good question. I like it. One negative three. Are you going the right way. Um. Is it going to cross the x-axis? No. Why not? That's the, highest. that's the highest point. I like it. And it's opening down. down. That is the highest point is the vertex, and the parabola is opening down. It will not cross the x-axis. So it does not exist here. Okay? And if I have, if I start growing downward, I'm going to go right one and left one and ha up or down how many? Down one. So I'm going to go right one, down one. Left one, down one. Oh, sweet. Look what I just found. What did I just find? Y-intercept. What's y-intercept? Zero, negative four. Perfect. Done. I like it. We did well. All right. I'm going to... Uh, I'll do, I'm going to skip number 10. I think that one's way easy. I'm going to go to 12, and then I'm going to go to something after that. So function on x is equal to negative 2, x minus 1, quantity squared minus 2. If I want to know the vertex, where it crosses the x-axis and the y-axis. Vertex is what? What? One negative two. Does the negative out front affect inside? No. Is that right? Is that clear now? Okay, so that negative, yeah, this negative outside does not affect what's happening inside this. So one negative two. Let's graph it. So one and then negative two. This parabola open up or down? Down. down. Is it going to cross the X axis. No. Why not? Do what? 
That, that is the highest point it opens down. I love that. Thank you so much for doing that. So this parabola is going to open downward. It is not going to cross the x-axis, so it does not exist. DNE, you could put. I, every time I look at a few kids' papers, I think it says O-N-E on my phone. So. And then, do I know enough information where it crosses the y-axis right now? It, we might once we pattern graph. Okay? So when I pattern graph this, I'm going to go right one and left one from the vertex and down how many? Why is it two? With that constant out front. Did I find where across the y axis? Zero, negative four. Perfect. Love it. These aren't too bad, are they? Next two. Um, I'm going to do, I'm going to, what, 16? I'm going to do 16, 16 and 24 and we'll be done, or 16 and 22 and we'll be done. Okay. Okay, so 16 I'll do first. Uh, function at x is equal to. X squared minus 6x plus 2. Shh. Vertex. <coughs> y intercept. X intercept. Okay. What are some things I know about it when it's written like this right now? You know the y intercept. It's in standard form. You have the y intercept. Okay. So 0, 2 is my. Y-intercept. It's set up in standard form so I can get the y-intercept right away. Do I have enough information to solve where it crosses the x-axis right now? No. Do I know where it crosses, what the vertex is right now? No. Do I know the vertex yet? Yeah, you can find it. I can find it, but like as a setup, oh, it's, no. it's not in vertex form. Okay. So one of two choices we can do. We can complete the square and put it into vertex form, which kids like to go away from. But if you do that, that will find you the vertex, and then it will be easy to set up the x-intercept. Okay, and the reason I say that is once you find put it in vertex form, you then set it equal to 0 and solve it. Or you could do the negative b over 2a, plug that back in, get a number, and then use the quadratic formula in order to find where it crosses the x-axis. Yeah. I don't know. Do I? That, so there's two different ways to get to the vertex. So the negative b over 2a, and then plug that in, and now we get you your vertex. Or if you complete the square, what you have, and again, complete the square, like Algebra 1 teachers probably frightened you away from completing the square. They probably showed you on a Friday right before spring break. Came back after spring break, and you're like, dude, I don't even know what we did last, you know, two weeks ago. And then they said, well, we'll share the quadratic formula now, and acting like that was a treat. Okay, I think it was a discredit that, unfortunately, in the whole grand scheme of things, I truly feel in my heart that completing the square is a function of the thought process that will allow you to think at a higher level. So I am going to complete the square on this. So let's complete the square. Will you let me? Yes. All right. So first thing on completing the square when it's set up in functional notation, is make a space. Still with me? Seems easy. I am going to take half of the x term, half of the linear term. What is half of the linear term? What's half of the linear term? Negative. negative 3, thank you. What is negative 3 squared as a quantity? Positive 9. So if I add 9 to one side, what can I also do to that side to show that it cancels out again? I could add it and subtract it from the same sign. I could have added it to either side of the equal sign if I wanted to, or I could do it this way. This right here is now my complete square. Okay? What two numbers multiply together to give me positive 9, add together to give me negative 6? Negative 3. So this is going to be rewritten as, this is the same thing as x minus 3 and x minus 3, which I could rewrite as x minus 3 quantity squared. Combine the like terms, minus 7. 
do I know my vertex? Yeah. What is my vertex? Three, Three negative seven now. All right, so let's plot this to see if we have a do not, it does not exist answer or not. So I have three, one, two, three, negative seven. What else do I know? Y intercept right now. Is it going to go ahead and cross the x axis? No. It is. So now you've completed the square. This is vertex form. If you take your vertex form and do this with it, I can go ahead and solve it. So how am I going to solve for x now? Add 7. Good. Now what? Square root. What should I not forget? Plus or minus. So I'm going to flip this over. So I'm going to get x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus root 7. Add 3. Okay, so where it crosses the x-intercept is at 3 plus root 7, comma 0, and 3 mi oops, minus root 7, comma 0. Okay, so things I know, I could pattern graph this, so I could go right 1, up 1, left 1, up 1, and then... And I know that here and here, one of the sides will be 3 plus root 7, and the other one will be 3 minus root 7, where those are crossing. Okay? Do you see why completing the square might be the better of the two ways to do it? Everyone wants to resort back to the quadratic formula. There's a cutesy, wordy <laughs> song that goes with it, and you're like, oh, I was remembering. Unfortunately, arithmetic takes over. Hardcore math. Okay, if you stay with the algebra stuff, the algebra is easy. The arithmetic kills you. So if you can limit your arithmetic, you're going to nail it. Hmm. What was the other one I said I was doing? 22? 24. 24. 24? Yeah. All right, here we go. Number 24. Do I have, what do I know about this problem right off the bat, what, how it's set up? It's, thank you. Why can I find the y-intercept right away? It's what kind of form? What form? Standard. So what is my y-intercept right off the bat? Zero, two. Love it. Okay. So some things I can do. Oh, my goodness. Think very little and think very little. Okay, hush with worm middle process. All right. Do I know the vertex off the top of my head? No. What do I feel we should do in order to get the vertex? Complete the square. Complete the square. Let's do it. Let's complete the square. Okay, so I'm going to do function at x is equal to 2x squared plus 8x. What is the first step? Making the space. All right. Next step, I'm going to divide everything by 2. Now, what gets kind of weird is I'm going to let this little 2 hang out over here. Okay, I'm dividing everything by the 2. Do you agree? What will I have to do with that 2 at the very, uh, the f of x divided by 2? What that happens to that 2 later? I do multiply back across. All right. So if I'm going to complete the square, I'm going to take half of the linear term. What's half of the linear term? 2. Is it positive 2 or negative 2? Positive 2, okay. What is positive 2 squared? 4. So I'm going to add 4 and subtract 4. What does this factor down to? x plus 2 and x plus 2, which is? x plus 2 quantity squared. Perfect. 
So f and x, don't forget about this little 2. I'm going to get x plus 2, quantity squared. Do this math, what do I get there? Huh? Negative 3. What should I do with that 2 at the end? Multiply everything by that 2. I'm going to multiply this, this, and this by that 2. That cancels here. I get the function at x is equal to 2 quantity x plus 2 squared minus 6. What's my vertex? Uh, negative 2, negative 6. Yes. Negative 2, negative 6. Okay. Do I know where it crosses the x-axis right now? No. Should I go use the quadratic formula no. on that? No. What can I do right now? I can make this equal to 0. So I'm going to get 0 is equal to this. What's next? Not yet. I want to get x all by itself. Add 6. What should I do? Oh, look at that. Divide by the 2. What should I do? Root. Root, root. What should I not forget? Plus or minus. So I'm going to flip-flop this. Then, subtract 2. So it crosses the x-axis at negative 2 plus root 3, comma 0, and negative 2 minus root 3, comma 0. Those are exact answers. That's all right. And then if I were to graph this, I think I could squeeze something down here that might look ugly. Okay, I know the y-intercept is 0, 2. like it. My vertex is negative 2, negative 6. So negative 2, negative 6. I could go right 1 and up 1. I could go left 1 and up 1. Oh, take it back. Right 1 and up 2. Why is it up 2? Okay. Do I know where this is and this is? Uh-huh. It's right there. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right. I'll put it right there on that folder. Okay. Two things that I'm going to give you. One, we have a pop quiz. You can work with a total of three people. Okay? Pop quiz right now. Really? Yep. And then there's a secondary worksheet. So, this is how it works. You work together. Get into a group of three. I don't care which three get together. But it's not three here, and then you go over to another group and join another group. Okay? So you work together on this. And then there's a worksheet on um, quadratic regression that I'm going to also give you that you have to plot data on your calculator. Use the quadratic regression now rather than the linear regression. So those are the two things we have between now and then.